Other means of payment in home trade. That was some good work over there. Now your desk is very well arranged. Thanks to you. What do I offer in return? Nothing much. But if we can conclude this discussion on means of payment, then I can rush home and do some other things. No problem. We have a few more to go, like a banker's draft. What is that? Now, this is a check written by one bank to another bank, requesting the other bank to pay a person or an institution a certain amount of money. I think I have heard of a banker's check. Mm. Do they mean the same thing? Yes, that's right. How is this related to the debtor-creditor situation? Very good question. So in this case, the creditor does not want a personal check. So the debtor pays the bank some money in exchange for a check, which is then taken to the creditor. The creditor then deposits this in his bank account. I see. Mm. So when should one use a banker's check? Well, a banker's check should be used where the amount involved is large, or where it is the policy of the business to use a banker's check. It can also be used where other means of payment will pose an inconvenience to the parties involved. And as always, mm. if it is the only means of payment available, then there is no other choice. Yes. And lastly, it is also used where the payee wants a guarantee of payment. That is because a banker's check cannot be dishonored. All right. Next, we have a credit transfer. Mm -hmm. So this one normally applies to employers paying salaries to their employees. The employees do not necessarily have bank accounts in the same bank as the employer. Yes. Money is transferred from an employer's bank account to the accounts of these employees. The details of the transactions are then shown on a form which is stamped and returned to the employer. I have fully understood that. Very good. Then in that case, we can now look at standing order. Okay. Here, the customer authorizes the bank where he has an account to make payments on a regular basis on his behalf. Interesting. Payment for what? Recurring expenses such as insurance premiums, higher purchase, or loan repayments. So how long does a standing order function? As long as the customer wants to make it. I like it. The customer does not have to go to the bank every other month to authorize payment. That's right. Next we have a traveler's check. Traveler's check? Mm -hmm. Is it a check issued to a traveler? Something of the sort. These are checks for a fixed amount sold by commercial banks to someone traveling away from home say, uh, a place where he cannot access his account. So the traveler can exchange the check for cash? That's right. The traveler is given the traveler's check in different denominations as he likes. The bank will charge a commission for the services based on the total amount of checks. So, the traveler does not have to move around carrying large amounts of cash. Mm -hmm. I like it too. It's a good one. Carrying cash around is risky and cumbersome. Then we also have a credit cards. I know about credit cards. Mm. You taught me about them a little earlier, remember? Then a recap won't be a bad idea. You want to try? Why not? Uh, credit cards uh, are usually plastic cards that enable a person to purchase goods and then pay for them later. The payment is usually made at the end of the month. That is right. The card holder becomes the debtor and the owner of the goods is the creditor. For every credit card purchase, the holder must sign for them, and then the creditor will submit them for payment at the agreed time. Now, we also have other terms used in home trade that you need to know about. Yes, please. They are used to specify the portion of expenses in card to be paid by the seller or the buyer. And the first one is called or nearest offer. O-N-O -O for short. O-N-O? -O. What does that mean? It means that there is a particular quoted price, but one can offer a price that is close to it, and it will be acceptable. The other one is called local price, or loco, if you like. Tell me about it. Now, this refers to the price of goods at the warehouse or wherever the goods are lying. 
Therefore, any other cost that the buyer will incur, like transportation cost, is squarely on the buyer himself. I get it. I know it's been a long journey, but finally we have come to an end of means of payment in home trade. In fact, you are finally aware of everything about home trade. Wow. You, Mrs. Betty, and Mr. Ochola have done a perfect job with me. May God bless you all. Thank you. Now there's only one more thing to learn. I thought we were done. What's that?